So when I was looking to incorporate a remote activated trading card dispenser on my R2-D2, I came across a number of these inexpensive uh, remote relays. And uh, I thought that that might be a good way to drop in a system to trigger the motor on the dispenser. Uh, let's take a closer look at them and see exactly how they work and whether or not this is going to suit my needs. So if you go online and look up these relays, they all operate at, I think, uh, 433 megahertz. You'll find all kinds of different variations on this, but they're all mostly the same. This particular one was marketed as a 6 volt, but you can see there it actually has a 5 volt relay on there, and it ran me about 10 bucks. Uh, the construction quality on this is uh, maybe a little bit suspect. Um, components are just kind of soldered in all sorts of manner there, but... Uh, um, overall, though, and you've got the relay here, you've got a coil antenna in the back, you have a setup switch there, which allows you to set the mode, um, and then you've got uh, the header pins here. You have the input voltage, plus and minus, and then these left three are all the relay uh, connections. You've got the common in the middle, and then you have normally closed and a normally open. Uh, I also have here a 12-volt relay so you can see it's essentially the same thing but it has a 12 volt relay on it um, and again construction quality is a little bit better on that maybe not much better but the interesting thing about these and this comes into play when you go to uh, connect them is if we look on the back you'll see that where the power leads come in it feeds everything back here but the relay itself is electrically isolated um, and that means that in order for you to get this to work, you need to bridge uh, from the uh, input voltage over to the common, and that provides power to the, uh, to the relay path. Uh, let me show you how I hooked it up. So understanding that the relay is electrically isolated from the input voltage makes it a lot easier to understand how to hook these up. I have my input voltage coming in here, and the positive immediately just goes right back out to the load. The negative from the load is connected to the normally open terminal on the relay side. Normally open meaning that the circuit is open, the motor is off, until the relay acts to close the circuit. And then in order to power the relay half of it, I needed to bridge the negative from the input over to the common terminal. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, so I am now feeding this 5 volts from my bench power supply. We have the green status LED telling us that the relay is working. And I've previously set this up to be in what they call inching mode, which means that the relay will close for as long as I press and hold the A button, and it will release as soon as I release the button. So if you listen, you'll probably be able to still hear the relay click as it activates and deactivates. So the other thing then becomes, how do you change the mode on these? Um, most of them work pretty much the same way, and it's a process of pressing and holding this button and then releasing it at a certain time based on when the status LED uh, flashes. So for this particular one, when you press and hold this for the first five seconds, the red light will be on, and then you'll get the green light again. And then it will begin a series of flashing the red light once, then twice, and then three times. And depending on... Uh, when you release this reset button, we'll lock it into the mode uh, that you've selected. So after one flash, it would be inching mode. After two flashes would be a different mode. And after three flashes would be the third mode. So if I do that, I'll press and hold the button. I get that initial red, and then it'll go green. And then it'll flash once, twice. And if I release the button now... I've set it into the self-locking mode, which means that I press the button once to activate the relay and a second time to deactivate the relay. But as the instructions will tell you, uh, after you change the mode, you need to repair the fob. So to repair the fob, uh, you simply press and hold this until the red light comes on and then release, press the button to pair and you get the flash indicating that the pairing was successful. So now when I press the button, it stays on until I press it to stop. Likewise, I could reset it to the third mode, which is to press one button to open the relay and then a different button to close it. And that's mode three. So it's flashed once, twice, 
one, two, three. Now I release the button, and now I need to repair the fob. See that? And now, if I press that button, pressing it doesn't do anything else, but pressing that one will stop it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, uh, overall, it's this has worked pretty well. I've tested the range on this as best I can, and it's worked fine from up to 50 feet away, which I figure is probably further than I'm ever going to want to uh, remote trigger the card dispenser. Um, so, I mean, overall, I think this is, a, for 10 bucks. this is a pretty good way to be able to drop in a remote activated trigger. I certainly wouldn't uh, rely on something like this for anything mission criti critical, like a, a system power um, kill switch or anything. But uh, for what I need, uh, for a real simple drop-in uh, remote trigger, I think this is pretty cool. So... Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have used anything like this before or uh, have any other ideas of, of other ways to, uh, to achieve this. I have seen online some micro relays, which are even smaller than this, usually end up having to solder the wires directly to the board, but it certainly is a lot smaller. These tend to come with these little enclosures, um, which, you know, for uh, my purposes of having this inside my R2, I kind of like having the extra protection. But... Uh, but yeah, so anyway, uh, hope this helps some of you, and I'll talk to you guys soon.